Okay, so we are here. Uh, let me. S Hello. Okay, I'll put down the link for. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So, Hello. um, yeah, it's Meet Me Pie again. It's very sunny today here in London, which is rare. Like, <laughs> you know what? We have two weeks of like heat wave and stuff. It's super hot, and then we have like a few week, like a week of raining, and then now it's just like it's it's nice again, which is great. Um. So uh, today we have Bo Yan with us, and uh, yeah. So what? Uh, where are you like calling from, actually? <laughs> uh, I'm from Serbia, and we also have very lovely weather today. Yeah, that's great. The so yeah. lace house, Dublin. <laughs> uh, Dublin is. It was beautiful up until five minutes ago. Now it's okay. getting a little bit cloudy, but it's all right. We also had rain for the last few day, the last few days, but it's like intermittent rain with a little bit of sunshine. So. Right. Yeah. Great. So, um, yeah. So for those uh, of you who is new to Meet with Pi, so first of all, we'll have a chat uh, about like what's news, like all the news in Python uh, recently. And uh, Boyan, if you want to, you can add any comments. Feel free to do it. And then we'll have an interview with you. Um, and then at the end, we'll have PyPI highlight, which is uh, just some libraries that we found interesting. And if Boyan, you have any Thing that's interesting to talk about you can just let us know as well so all the notes is here uh, i always do it too high here <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, I try to do it but like it's just okay so yeah you can see all the notes there and um yeah so without further ado let me try to share my screen and if it works then i would be able to share my screen but right now i don't so give me one sec okay now it's um, first news, which is not a very happy news, but mm -hmm. I think that's basically uh, something that is expected, uh, you know, because Py, uh, PyCon Italy, um, you know, uh, they, they was, it was supposed to happen in April or in, um, in May, I'm not sure, sure, but, uh, and then they have to delay it because of the outbreak of coronavirus, mm -hmm. and then it was postponed to November, but I think, they just made a very hard decision of um, canceling it. So, yeah. yeah, it's another one of those bad news that come from that is coming from coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, PyCon Italy was amazing about PyCon Italy is that last year I've been and then, like, this is the first conference that I have red wine for lunch, like. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, all the food are amazing because, like, this conference is in the hotel in Florence. And then, like, we just have, like, tables that people sit around. You know, it's kind of like a very uh, high-class, like, buffet-ish kind of setting. You have loads of food. And then for each table, there's, like, two bottles of red wine. I mean, like... And then if you're being very sneaky, you can, like, drink all the red wine in this table and then go to the next table to drink another. <laughs> <laughs> go just, to just... Italy next year. Go. Everyone, just yeah. go. <laughs> just look for the table that nobody's interested in the red wine. You just go there and drink all the red wine. That's that's how you can do it. Um, yeah, but don't tell the organizers that I did that because uh, they won't invite me next time. Um, I think yeah. it's a good commercial for the conference. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the cheese is amazing as well. They have like a cheese as big as a cake that they put in like at the end. You know, they have party cocktail parties after the 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 the, the first day or the last day of the conference or both. I fo I forgot. But they have a cheese that's as big as a cake. I thought it's a cake, but like people are just like grabbing pieces from it and eat it. I was like, what's that? And then it's the cheese. And this is just crazy. Okay. I'm definitely going next year. Yep, <laughs> yeah. Me too. yeah, I'm gonna be one of the first ones to buy the tickets. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are so... powerful speakers. That's us. <laughs> yeah. So Pycon Italy. Pycon uh, Italy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Come for cheese, stay for talks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very good advertisement. They should, uh, you know, hire you. Um, so this is um, pajamas, and uh, this is a blog post that I've written a few like last week and uh, the purpose of it is because we have a CFP workshop because because uh, Lays and I you know uh, organizing pajamas and uh, with you know a bunch of other people and uh, we feel that you know because it's an online conference and also we want diversity uh, we really want more first-time speaker because like I think it's a it's a problem that a lot of conferences are facing right now is that like people you know People like me basically have to confess that, like, you know, you, you'll be bored of me because I'm just like everywhere. <laughs> so, like, and 
I know that like at some point I have to retire. I just feel that, you know, um, uh, yeah, I just don't want people to get bored of me. So I should do less actually no. maybe starting from last year. <laughs> Or, but the thing is, like, if I don't yeah. give a talk, then it's difficult to justify my company to pay me to uh, <laughs> fly there. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. But like, I'm happy to like, uh, you know, mentor people and help people who are like first time speaker to uh, speak at conferences. So um, yeah, so this is uh, basically just a workshop that I will be there. I will try to also get, uh, you know. If Lace, you agree, you of course yes, you're there, yes. and uh, we try to also get other organizers who are also experienced speakers um, to be there and help to answer any questions. And if you are considering submitting to um, the pajamas and you have any questions about how you can submit and what their talk formats will be, yes. uh, then come and we can chat. And um, yeah, so it will be a webinar on Zoom, so you have to sign up. So yeah, just don't mm -hmm. get to the last minute. Yes. Will there be a competition for the best pyjama? Uh, yeah, that could be a good idea, actually. But like we run for 24 hours. So like, I think, yeah, it, I have to stay there like to, to or people <laughs> just send me the pictures. Like that's easy. Yeah, submit the pictures would be cool. Yeah, uh, maybe we could do that. <laughs> also, I want to remind everyone that we have the one of the biggest, the nicest, biggest things about pyjamas is the community track. Uh, that we're going to have space to be run as well. So kind of like with the fact that Python, Python Italy, for example, canceled their, their conference, we're going to be offering spaces uh, for people that had their favorite conferences dropping because of coronavirus during the year. We're going to have space for people to, jo to join there and to host their mini conferences there as well. So we, we're expecting for your proposals. Please just submit your proposals. Yeah, we, we really like that to happen because like we like I said, we want diversity. It's difficult for us to like organize things that is for a, a particular community because like we don't know what you like and what you need. But if you are organizer of a local community, you have an idea, you it could be just like a few talks you want to, you know, from your uh, country or your area that you know they could want to, they want to speak you know you can submit a proposal for like oh i want to have a mini conference with a few talks there uh you're welcome or if you want to just have a sessions or workshops with your local community in another language or uh, it's kind of a safe space for people that you know uh, in your group for example uh, my meetup you know AI you know, AI club and, and gender minorities, we are like focusing on gender minority people, then you could you could have something like that, you know, like it's targeting on a, a specific group. Uh, we welcome that to be uh, on our community space. So yeah, that's it. And uh, so this is, <laughs> Lace, this is a friend. And Yes, uh, uh, it's a friend from EuroPython. Yes, um, he is a machine learning engineer really 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 cool dude and he just put together this course on data science and business analytics with python and the course is quite cool i'm watching some i'm watching some lectures already and i sent a link to also a few people that were interested in doing a data science a data science course but something a little bit more focused on machine learning pipelines and then a little bit of data cleaning um loads of jupyter notebooks um so yeah, so if you're a newbie and you're interested, because we get loads of people asking us all the time, how do I get in? How do I get in? So it's like, well, that's one of the ways. And also Skillshare is giving, I think, two months, uh, the first two months for free um, if you if you just sign up for, for courses with them. So you could just do this course. It's four hours. It doesn't take you two, two months. Just do it. And yeah. Yeah, and like... Uh... Yeah, basically you said everything that I want to say, and um, yeah, like Jasper is so much fun. Like yeah, yeah, and uh, I I think I need to meet up with <laughs> with them like soon, soon um, after the pandemic, you know. Um, right. Okay. So next one is uh, Circuit Python. So this is like a joint event with Python Island, is it? Uh, I, yeah. I'm not too sure. Even though yeah. I'm kind of like in the loop, but I'm not really paying <laughs> you attention. You're always in the loop. You're everywhere. You said it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Like, yeah, this is actually something I try to avoid, but like, but that's uh, actually like what my friend said, like, oh yeah, next year I will only like go to like six conference and end up going to 10 or things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah well okay uh, so what is this 
Yes, so Circuit Python Day, so the 9th of September, so 9 of the 9th, uh, was chosen as a Circuit Python Day. And then um, by the Adafruit, so there's another link a little bit further on the, on the actual PyChat page uh, with the Adafruit newsletter. And then there they give a little bit more details. Yes, they, on that one, they give a little bit more details on the actual Circuit Python Day a little bit more to the bottom. Uh, and it's basically an event that if you have any interest on microcontrollers at all, or if you would like to learn a little bit of like how to set a one, or if you wanna do a little bit of IoT, if you're interested in a little bit of hacking, um, Circuit Python Day is the day where everyone is gonna be doing something related to that. So if you have any interest, keep an eye, have a look on Twitter as well. Um, tag, go and search Circuit Python, um, Circuit Python Day. And it's going to be there. And then, in addition to that, uh, PyLadies and Circuit Python Day are organizing an event, and then they invited Python Island as well to join. And we might do like a mega event for the ninth. You know, I can't take my eyes off this like uh, this dancing pirate thing. I know it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like if you if you know me, like I use that a lot in chats because like it's one of my favorite emoji thingies. So yeah, right. It is good. It is good. Uh, so what's next? Uh, next is also yes. So oh, yeah. Nadia, you I, know Nadia, right? I I saw this. I I don't know. I assume it's her. Like I don't know the author personally, but I have uh, seen this, and uh, I also recommend that to my colleague as well. Yep. So I'm buying that. It it haven't arrived yet, but I'm buying that book. It, uh, Guido's uh, recommendation. Guido was the first one tweeting saying that he hadn't had time to read it initially, but then he read it and he recommended to everyone that has any interest in open source, um, and it's working with open source as well. So if that's you. Um, we recommend this book as well, although I haven't read, I haven't read it yet. Um, and also something else that seems to be quite cool if you're a, um, open source enthusiast or maintainer or whatever it is related to open source, uh, is Nadia's GitHub page. She has some, uh, interviews there with open source maintainers and some videos and podcasts, and she has a lot of repos on, uh, guides of how to be part of open source. Um, and she's a cool speaker as well. So yeah, there you go. More material for research. Yeah, I'm also thinking about buying it, but the problem is that uh, I still have a lot of books in my shelf, <laughs> bookshelf. That I, I, when you know, I used to carry some books when I travel uh, because I just worry that I won't get enough entertainment on the plane or in the airport. But I mean, like now I'm traveling less. So basically I spend more time in front of the computer than reading books, which is bad. Um, but I will see, like, I think it's a very good tool book uh, for us, like, like, that, like you know, uh, yeah. when we are working on open source. Let me uh, speak with my colleague to see, like, maybe we can have one as a tool book. And again, like, we, because we don't have an office like now that you can't keep a book there for everybody to read. And it's just, I feel like, hmm. You know, it's, it's like, for me, it's like, that's the reason why I haven't ordered it yet. But like, I feel like, yeah, it should, everybody should really like have it or read it. Like as a two book, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you can also, you also have the option of uh, buy on uh, EPUB or like- Yeah, you can buy it on uh, Kindle. I've seen it, but the thing is that I don't even have a Kindle, which I really want to have. Um, but case, again, yeah. like I'm not reading enough to justify it. So. Actually, if anyone that is watching has an opinion between Remarkable 2, iPads, or Kindles, please just send me a DM. <laughs> I'm, I'm really conflicted. So please. Yeah, basically, I have no patience. So like, I I rarely read books. And we, if I read books, it would be something like a NoFo or something that I got captured. And I just like, forgotten to eat or forgotten to sleep and just like, I am extreme. I'm either like, you know, after a few seconds, I put it down and never touch it again. Or I got captured and I was just like, I can't put it down. So like, I, I'm just like, my personality is very fragmented. <laughs> uh, what are you reading at the moment, Bajan? Uh Currently I'm reading uh, some non-technical stuff, mostly virtual, and it's super interesting. Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, it's so bad it's good. I hope nobody from literature majors heard me. <laughs> right. So
so uh, let's go back to where we were. And um, so, yeah, maybe we should uh, start our interview. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Mm. And um, I think, yeah. I even brought the unicorn. <gasps> oh, I should. OK. I know that not everybody has seen my teddy bear. I should have my teddy bear, but anyway. Um, I, have a, I have a snake somewhere around here. Shall yeah. we do a, a break for oh, everyone? Wait, just, to yeah, just a yeah. second. Let me Give grab me my second. teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> I will showcase my small one. Actually, I got two, but like because oh, everybody's no, no, no. showing it, and I have a small one with me right now. Um. <laughs> oh. Wait a second. <laughs> oh. cool. now, right. now okay. we're all ready. Yes. Right. And we all so. get our own assistance. <laughs> <laughs> so I think first of all, like um it's just like a standard for every interview. We want uh Boyan, you kind of introduce yourself a little bit and um let us know who you are. Okay. Well, uh, you know my name. Uh, currently, I'm learning French and Russian. I love reading. Uh, yeah, and I love programming, which is why I'm here. <laughs> I've been working uh, with Python for the last uh, decade or so, and it's pretty interesting. For more boring and very uh, longer version, you can visit my LinkedIn page, but I'm not going to bother with that. No. <laughs> so you have been doing Python for a long time, is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, I believe uh, it was 2009 when I started. So it was Python, yeah. what version it is? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I think 2.6 or 2.7, something like that. Yeah, that's that's very long time ago. At that time, yeah. there's no Python 3, right? No. It was later, and I know uh, when everybody was complaining about why is there no Python 2.8? What's happening? Yeah, and nobody believed in Python uh, 3, myself included. <laughs> yeah, so okay, can I ask you, like, when did you start to touch Python 3? You're convinced. Uh, two years ago, I'm a very late adopter. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago. Okay, like I, I'm just to drive it a little bit because that's very interesting. So, are you still maintaining Python two point seven code? No. Uh, last year, I managed to basically rewrite everything to work in Python three, and it's so much nicer. The thing that sold me is uh, f strings. I know that's not as important as other stuff, but it was so beautiful and elegant, and I said. <laughs> I'm going to switch to Python 3 just because of that. Screw yeah, I, else. I love it as well. I always yeah. think that, like, you know, I always try to start with 3.6 be just because, like, I don't want to write things that's not, like, F-string. It's just, like, make it so much longer, and I don't I don't like it. I just, like, okay, I'm not supporting 3.5 or below because of that. <laughs> yeah, but it's so elegant, and I'm looking at it and saying, why doesn't every language have this? Yeah, I think I do believe JavaScript have it, but like it's it's a little bit ugly. I think the way they embedded the variable. Okay, yeah. so yeah, you said you love unicorn. Like, <laughs> why is it because it's cuddly or? <laughs> it has tons of colors, and since I'm legally forbidden from designing everything, anything at all, I can choose unicorns. Okay. <laughs> I started with web design and those pages are hidden from public forever. <laughs> so the main lesson for everybody listening is never put background red in your CSS. For some reason, people hate that. Don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Can't imagine, right? Can't imagine. No. Mm -mm. So, uh, what, so what do you do for for work then like uh you 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 are a very senior in python so yeah what was your day-to-day -day, like work thingy uh, it depends on the day uh since i'm also working as a ceo uh, there's a big chunk of the day where i just write the proposals business proposal after business proposal and it's <laughs> uh, basically the same thing when you are submitting for the work you know, the worst part about that is when company ghosts you. 
same thing happens for proposal. Uh, I absolutely love my clients and they never did anything like this. It's just an imaginary example, but uh, when they need some info or stuff like that, they call me every five minutes. When I need something, it takes a few weeks. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of like have both, right? Not just coding, you have to also do some management work. I assume. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, so but like uh, what, maybe tell me a little bit more about like what your company is, is using Python for, like what's the, you know, your speciality in Python? Yes. Uh, I mostly work with uh, machine learning uh, uh, teams. They give me a huge chunk of code and I transfer that into something that's production ready. I also do lots of uh, mentoring, uh, basically teaching people how to write human readable Python. Yeah. And uh, making thing, everything runs on AWS, a little bit with Docker, designing infrastructure with microservices. Uh, my company, they do lots of uh, web development as well. And there we cover everything from PHP and JavaScript uh, and uh, Django. Uh, lately, I started using a fast API and it's so beautiful. I love it. It's so minimalistic and nice. Yeah, so you prefer that rather than um, TensorFlow? <laughs> uh, fast API is something like Django, but uh, you know, regarding the machine learning frameworks, I don't have any preferences. Basically, whatever the research team likes the most, I'll work with that. Okay. Right. Sorry, I, I was like thinking about fast AI there. Sorry, like, I'm I'm a bit like not still still not waking up. That's why I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> um, so, uh, but when did you start at your company? Well, I started my company three years ago, and before that, I had two startups okay. <laughs> where I was also CEO <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> yeah, like. I think, yeah, I think we want to know about like a uh, startup, like how, how to like, how, how to do that? Like how to start your own startup? Do you have to have a good idea or like, do you just think that, oh, there's a need in the market? Like how, how do you start a startup then? Well, most of the people are going to tell you, you need to have business plan. Uh, you need to have uh, lots that and that thing is you need to be lucky. <laughs> That's the most important uh, uh, stuff. So I was working as a junior developer and I had a friend who had a friend who wanted a website and I was like, yeah, I can work that in my uh, spare time and that extended and we started uh, creating a search engine for something like a Google, but for trucks. It turns out people in America really love buying trucks. Yeah. So that was also my first uh, uh, first contact point with uh, MongoDB with uh, linear regressions, anomaly detection, lots of cool stuff. I know at the peak we had like uh, 2,000 visitors per day and about 10 million records. So we had to track uh, and predict, is this a good deal for car or not? And eventually uh, we didn't get enough traction, so we switched to another uh, startup uh, with uh, same investors uh, where we develop a uh, I believe it was something, I'm trying to figure out a good explanation for this yeah. because uh, it's a Wikipedia, but uh, based on cause and effect, basically what caused what, and we group those data on a geographical and temporal uh, level. So you can uh, zoom in on certain areas and see what was happening there over the time, what was causing what and influences and stuff like that. It was a very interesting project, especially with the NLP site because uh, we used uh, Wikipedia as a starting source and did a bunch of NLP stuff to figure out what was the uh, cause of that. Yeah, I'm like also recently looking at like Wikipedia with my colleague as well, because we try to load in the uh, P DBpedia, you know, it's kind of like a mirror of Wikipedia and try to no load that into uh, our database, Terminus DB. So uh, yeah, so that's that's great actually. So um, do you have like, top three advice for people who would like to have their own company to, to be CEO of that and uh, I have a bunch of advice uh, <laughs> since uh, yeah that's not because I'm supervisor or anything it's just because I made tons of mistakes I had a whole decade uh, to do them and learn from them 
basically, you need to figure out why you want to be a CEO. Most people, uh, when they think of uh, being CEO, that's, oh, I'm going to have so much freedom, so much money. It's not like that. There's tons mm -hmm. of bureaucracy, a uh, bunch of uh, people uh, skills needed, a uh, bunch, bunch of negotiations. You'd be surprised uh, how much time you spend on refining features. Uh, and you basically need to use tons of different skill sets because you have your marketing team, your development team, uh, your design team, and you need to connect everything uh, into one uh, coherent uh, whole. So that's my first advice. Basically, figure out do you really want to be CEO or, and why you want to be CEO. Because uh, maybe that reason uh, you want to be CEO, I want a big bunch of money. You can start working in the finance industry. There's tons of money there and quite a lot of stress. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, to be honest, I, I just can't imagine doing that because uh, Lace know me better. Like, I'm the person who maybe I would just create something and try to sell it as, much, as fast as possible. I'm not a very patient person that, like, I don't want to maintain it. You know, I don't want to, you know. Um, but, like, I think, yeah, you, you need to spend a lot of time and a lot of effort in it that a lot of people are not prepared to. So, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. about... Yeah. It's about ideology, right? You're like, you have an idea and then you're like, oh, I'm in love with this idea. And then you just go with it. Uh, but then it's challenging, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and uh, you need to get a uh, sort of divorce from that idea because uh, what you want uh, from that product is not necessarily what market wants from that product. And your users, they want a certain st uh, things that you don't want. So it requires mm. a certain emotional detachment from all that. Yeah. Which is very hard to do because uh, when you write your code, it's the best code in the world and you love it and you're never going to let anybody change it. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing I learned from open source is that, you know, uh, I still trying to push the boundary of getting out of my comfort zone to have my code online and have people to contribute and like, oh, welcome them with open arms basically because if you want more contributor you should let people to contribute to it but like they're still like at the bottom of my heart there's still a little bit of resistance there's like oh yeah like do i want people to change it this way but yeah i think having an open mind is very important in open source as well yeah, yeah. everybody's saying for founders you need to have a huge ego it's completely wrong you need to have a little bit of less ego and you need to listen more uh, especially when you hire people, uh, the thing I found with a bunch of uh, CEOs is they love to micromanage things. Oh, yeah. And I'm guilty of that. At one point, I was uh, basically reading books uh, about marketing, about design, about uh, programming, and doing micromanaging of all the teams in my company, which was super exhausting and counterproductive basically you need to hire people and you need to trust them yeah. because yeah. they're probably smarter than you yeah i think and... that the win for being a ceo is to have the best people in the world to work for you <laughs> and then you have to like you can hands off you know like oh, self-driving car <laughs> yeah also big advice is uh don't hire your friends oh because... yeah <laughs> Yeah, the first person I fired was my best friend, and it oh, was God. very traumatic. Uh, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, I I was like, oh, I don't know, like, my company is the kind of, like, because uh, Lace know that, you know, uh, we have uh, brothers working together, so, um, yeah. But I think, like, uh, it depends, like, things are working quite well uh, in, in us, but I think, yeah, I, I understand where it's coming from you, like, uh, that you know things could get wrong i i don't even want my friends to be my flatmates to be honest like <laughs> i think for the same reason yeah yeah i'm in it's a bit difficult especially when you're different hierarchical levels in company at one point uh, okay your friends your equals and the next point uh, you're that person's boss or uh, that person is your boss and you need to com your interaction completely changes and it's mm -hmm. very difficult uh, to retain it afterwards. Yeah. 
So, um, okay, so besides of business thing, I think you also do a lot of things in the community. For example, you are mentoring in our Humble Data Workshop. Yeah. <laughs> amazing and like and then uh and in yeah in that faithful day i think like i assigned lace to your group and kind of like well i say a group but actually it's more like a one-to-one -one because we <laughs> have a lot of attendees showing up last time and it was a two-to-one that one yeah <laughs> yeah so um yeah like uh first of all thank you so much but uh why do you want to sign up as a mentor like why do you helping us like we want to know <laughs> Well, uh, first of all, that's because uh, when I was in Europython as a speaker, uh, you were talking to everybody, you need to sign up for this, this is super awesome, and I'm very easily influenced person, so I was like, if uh, Chuk is telling us that's super awesome, that must be super awesome, so I just sign up. <laughs> you see people here, people listen to you, I tell you this all the time, and you don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm like really flattered. <laughs> um, yeah, how do you find it? Like, do, do you like the experience? Uh, it was very amazing. Uh, first of all, my students, uh, half of them uh, is here at the moment. They were super nice and very supportive of me, especially when I didn't know something. We use our good friend Google to find a solution. And it was super fun, basically not expecting me to have all the answers, but uh, work, working together to solve the problems. It was uh, also, I managed to see a bunch of different perspectives. Also the other mentors were very nice and everybody was sharing knowledge. So it was really, really nice experience. I'm hoping to join it again in the future. Yeah, and uh, there's actually good news because like we may have it in November again. Um and details to be followed uh yeah because we are still at the early stage of start planning it and and also if anyone want to uh, help us organizing you're also welcome to get in touch uh, <laughs> yeah so um but yeah but like uh also i'm so glad to hear that you like it and uh yeah i just i just hope that like because uh, uh, the thing is like we always have the evaluation after the workshop. And then the thing is like, we talk about, oh my God, like we have all these problems that's happening. For example, PyCon Africa, like where are the attendees? Like where are they? Like they, they disappeared. And um, yeah, like, uh, but we, we're still learning. We've made a lot of mistakes because it's just a second uh, workshop actually. And we are going to have our third. And then, yeah, we hope that like in the future, it will be kind of like Jungle Girls. That is something in the community that is really, um, yeah, we really like uh, helping to put a diversity and all this stuff. So about that, so Boyan, I want to know about your opinion about like the Python community. Like, what do you think about it? Like, uh, how how do you think like compared to tech community in general? Hmm. Uh, well, I'm completely biased here because I'm mainly doing uh, Python uh, programming for the last decade. But in one of uh, my previous companies, uh, when I started working, basically it was super funny because I started working as a front-end developer and there was a huge open space for Java developers and everybody looked exactly like me, but with a longer beard, <laughs> super casual. <laughs> and the other side was C-sharp developers and everybody there wore a suit and a tie and they were like super, super serious. So I was thinking, Java community looks much better for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. then uh, it's very verbose writing in Java. Yes. Yeah. So like, Lace may have more opinion because Lace also did Java a little bit before. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I saw that she started, with, I think we spoke about that actually on the Humble Data Workshop that she started with Java and I was like, yeah, so do you want to talk a little bit about design patterns in Java? And then you talk about design <laughs> patterns in Python. <laughs> it's like completely different words. It's like, um, yeah, I don't really like Java exactly because of that. I think everything that you're going to write, it just becomes like, it doesn't matter what it is if you just, have to apply the object-oriented uh, programming uh, concept to it. It's just because this becomes this huge bundle of code, like loads of classes and loads of subclasses. And it's like, I don't really know how this relates to anything else anymore. I just wanted to make a calculator, like. Um. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, second year of my college, uh, we got assignment to write a calculator in C. So you, you know the, <laughs> yeah, you know the feeling. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. How was the calculator in C? Tell me. Tell us everything about it. Uh, that was the only project in my university where I got uh, six out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Not great. Not happy about. Not that. very great because uh, you had uh, our assistant also worked as a tester. So basically, you write wrote a thing and he tested all the possible inputs, and yeah. exception handling. What the hell is that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember I was a student. Yeah, that's that's quite tough, actually, because I have done like a C, I think a C course, like for two, two courses. Uh, and then like the exam is ridiculous. It's just like you don't have a computer. You, you've written down things. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's super crazy. I mean, uh, uh, we started with C. Uh, then we started uh, doing C++, then we switched to Assembler in a new university. We had oh, whole yeah. semester of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we started working with Java and that was like, oh my God, there's garbage collector here. You don't have to write destructors for stuff. This is so beautiful. Java is the best programming language ever. And then until, in the... until you start dealing with arrays, <laughs> until there. <laughs> until there. And then, uh, I think it was fourth year, we actually started writing GUI. And it was four years of education, we finally saw something on the screen. It was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always think that like a, a, a good presentation really helps. Like, because we have, we have like all hands meeting and always, you know, when the back end team shows some stuff and then like they would have like, okay, so open a, a window, a terminal and then run this and it runs, it's perfect. It's like, okay. And then when the front end team presents something that like you open it on a browser and you click this and that is like, it's much more appealing to watch. <laughs> <laughs> look how beautiful our page is. Yeah. <laughs> Said everybody ever. And look how beautiful my backend code is, said nobody ever. Yeah. Especially yeah. No one really side. cares. It's like, okay, good job. Like, I mean, there's no error there. Like, that's all you can see, actually. You you don't see the beauty, like, you don't appreciate their hard work. Of course, it's very difficult stuff. And then, of course, like, solving, like, making something that works with a bug is difficult. But, like, still, you know, because we are still human, we are still, like, looking at colorful things and, you know, things that you can interact with. So. <laughs> yeah, but uh, when I'm teaching juniors and doing some mentoring for them, I tell them nobody's going to care about uh, your quality of backend code but you. And you need to be the person who sets up uh, standards and always try to make it uh, more and more beautiful and more elegant, especially in Python. If something looks messy, it's probably wrong. Uh, there's that sense of, uh, okay, this is very beautiful. When you create something like that, there's some inner satisfaction that you get uh, that I don't think I ever got in any other language. Yeah, that's so true. I always have that like feeling of like, oh, I don't like this code and you know, maybe there's something wrong in it. And yeah, and you can see the patchy code from the first side. Actually, I always look at my old code. It's like, that's really patchy. That's not like nice. <laughs> Yeah. And also when I have uh, somebody telling me, oh, I want to switch to front end uh, development, they have it so easy. And I'm like, you have no idea. Basically, yeah. you have one compiler and that's it. If you're, it works, it, it works. In your front end, if it works, it works on your browser. Then you have a couple of other browsers, <laughs> mobile devices to check, and then it maybe works. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and there's also the resizing of windows as well, that sometimes you're just resizing things and it just goes mental. So like make sure it's responsive. And then there is also inclusion. You need to make sure that people that have problems with um, color, contrast, and um, all the other stuff as well, that like everything is in there. It's very complex. Yes. Yeah. It's very easy to make a bad front end code. It's very difficult to make it a good one. Yeah. That's the reason why I'm yeah. so resistant on front end because, you know, it's just like all the compatibility of like browsers just driving me nuts. It's like, why we still have to support like Safari and, and Internet Explorer? Well, Internet Explorer is literally dead, but like still, I was like, why no, not just everybody it's... use Chrome or Firefox? That's much easier. Internet Explorer is never going to die. <laughs> I know in 2008, in 2009, when I was working, like, uh, for one, we had a client who was a big company, which name I'm not allowed to pronounce. 
but one of the people that was working in the management sector was using Internet Explorer 3. I did not know that the thing existed. That was at the oh, time that Internet God. Explorer 6 was horrible. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. It's like, it sounds like a horror movie. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, like, uh, well, we... We don't like diversity in browsers, but like we do like diversity in people uh, in Python community. So, um, so what do you think about that? Like, do you consider yourself a minority? Because I, I, I don't know. I always need to ask people. Or do you consider yourself an ally that try to help uh, minority people to be not minority anymore? So, what do you think? Well, uh, I think I'm pretty stereotypical developer. <laughs> I'm basically when you Google. Uh, programmer you're gonna get something like me <laughs> <laughs> it's the picture there beside the it's the google images the first google images that comes beside a senior python developer okay <laughs> yes <laughs> and as such i really try to help people enter into the tech market i know lots of people are having a hard time because uh, uh, especially in my country uh, developers tend to be very pretty much the same people, they behave out the same. And I think uh, that's quite bad because uh, especially with the complex solution and the world is getting more and more complex. Uh, for that, you need multiple points of view, multiple approaches, and you you're not going to get uh, that uh, with a bunch of people who all think and act the same. You need more diversity in order to solve the problems. So I'm trying to help as much as possible. Uh, the thing I found, for example, with uh, when you do mentoring, it's uh, not just doing the workshop, uh, but also doing the follow-ups, basically checking up each week. Uh, uh, do you have problems with anything? Uh, do you need uh, assistance with something? Do you need code reviews, something like that? Basically, I'm trying to focus on the long-term uh, support, making sure you get there and you're successful. I think that's very helpful to people to know, okay, somebody's there, I can ask for advice because it's super intimidating when you start. Yes, there's Python, but then there is uh, functional programming, there's subject programming, when do you use each other? Okay, there are multiple versions of Python, what's this? There's Python 3.6, there's Python 3.8. How they set up everything on uh, Windows, on uh, Ubuntu, on uh, my Mac. What is this thing, virtual environment? What is Docker? Uh, what is poetry? What, what's happening here? And uh, stuff like that, organization. Uh, we take it for granted, uh, lots of things that are very simple and obvious to us, but when you're starting, it can be very overwhelming. So I'm trying to focus on that and help people get some good uh, basis uh, for everything because we learned lots of good uh, things uh, in university because we started basically from zero. Like, why does uh, why is 32-bit integer important? Because yeah. we were working on 32-bit processor and we are directly programming register, so you understand that stuff. But in Python, you don't have that limitation and you lose, uh, you get a bunch of knowledge uh, how it works, everything uh, behind the curtains. But uh, when you're starting and you're searching for your first job, you don't need all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to help as much as possible, but I'm pretty new in the being activist and helping people. Today, uh, actually this year, was my first ever time giving a talk on EuroPython. Yeah, it, it wasn't the best talk, but it was my first one, so I'm proud of it. Well, I, I think good job. I mean, like, uh, yeah. you have to start somewhere, and I'm glad that you started and tried to help people, like helping out in our workshop and all this really helped. And now you have some lovely mentees to uh, to, to mentor, so which is great. <laughs> I think that's amazing. And uh, yeah, like, I can't say, like, I can't say that, I don't want to say that on behalf of the community, but like, at least on behalf of Humble Data, we really thank you for helping helping out. And um, yeah. Thank you, that means quite a lot. So, uh, Lace, do you have anything to add? 
Uh, well, I, I want to say thank you for being my mentor. Uh, I can't interrupt you saying that, but thank you very much. It was really, a really, really, really nice experience on Humble Data, for real. It was amazing. So thank you very much. And I want to call a little bit of attention as well for your virtual coffee space. So you're telling us that you like to help, that you're trying to help uh, with everyone that is studying, and you have 10 plus years experience with Python. So do you want to tell everyone how to get in contact with you then? Yeah, I'm organizing virtual coffee and that's basically uh, free and open to everybody. The only rule is basically not se no selling and no pitching. So we can talk about anything you want. Uh, if you're starting with Python, I can do code review of your code, give you some advice, point you toward the literature and stuff like that. If you're a business owner, we can exchange experiences and stuff like that. If you're none of that, we can talk about literature, philosophy, anything you want. It's basically a space for me to get to know other people and see if I can help and exchange experiences. It's basically like that. Just going on a coffee with somebody and talking stuff. <laughs> so bring your coffee and schedule your dates. The, we're yes. going to put the Calendly um, link as well on the video description as soon as we update the video. Yeah, yeah so... everybody's welcome. Yeah, so do you have a link for, for the virtual coffee or yes, just... Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, I think I shared it in the yeah, it's a... All right. Okay, yeah. so uh, give me one sec. It's over here. No. I just put it on the comments there as well. Right. So uh, it's weekly and um, so everybody can apply, right? Every, everybody can join. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's basically a, a, cal a calendar application. You just go there and say, ah. I want to meet Boji on this day at this hour. And then boom, that's it. He just has to accept it. Yeah, I think uh, you have to worry about a lot of people applying now. <laughs> we got to promote it for you. <laughs> As my uh, client would like to say, that's a high fidelity problem. We don't need <laughs> to worry about it now. <laughs> we cannot stop pressure to get to it. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, do you have anything to ask, Lace? Because, like, I think we have to uh, go through everything that I think we have in mind uh, now. Um, let me see. Um, I could ask you, so, yeah, how did you get into programming? Like, why did you get into programming initially? Oh, that's a very good uh, story. Basically, <laughs> um, I always loved computers okay. uh, and uh, when I was, uh, I was super good with mathematics and I wanted to join a uh, mathematical middle school, uh, school in our country, but my parents were like, nah, this bullshit, nobody's going to make money from programming and stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> instead I went into economics okay. and super boring stuff. Uh, and yeah, now I'm manager, but never mind that. Uh, but I had lots of time to work on uh, programming, uh, designing websites. I think I was uh, 15 years old when I uh, made my first website and sold it. So, ah, so that's how yeah. you got in. That's that's where your love for web uh, for web development comes from. Yeah, I was working in Dreamweaver. If you don't Ooh. know that. I know that. I'm, oh my god, I, I betrayed my age now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh my god. Look, I heard the word somewhere, but I think it's one of those old things, kind of like, I don't know, assembly language or something. One of the things I tried Dreamweaver as well, but like at the end of the day, I would prefer HTML. Actually, oh. I would. I would, you know, quickly do a skeleton with Dream Reaver because you can see that how it looks like. And then I would switch on. So basically, it's kind of like Photoshop or thing. Like, it's a GUI, so you can put things together. But I really want to micro-control how things look like. So usually, I would just switch on the HTML tab and change the things inside. Yeah, and it generates a bunch of boilerplate code that you don't need at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, wonderful. So I think then that that ends our pie chat for today, right? Our interview. And 
then thank well thank you very much Bridget, for answering your questions thank you very much for being here and then thank you very much for inviting me I yeah. hope uh, I get back soon here. <laughs> well, I won't let you go just yet because yes. we still have the PyPI highlight. So, yes. um, so I have I have my uh, suggestion. I think Boyan can ask something because this is about PyPass and Docker. So I think you are an expert in this area as well. So uh, right now, I recently I'm trying to uh, have an integration test for my library, and. Uh, you know, we, we run the back end in the Docker, but uh, I think um, figuring out like what's the best library to use it to get a PyTest. And then this PyTest Docker Compose basically can uh, kind of, you know, I know that it's too small for people to see, but uh, the link is, you know, in the note. Um, so yeah, this is just, you know, um, like a fixture that you could use inside PyTest. And I am still figuring out because like they don't have a documentation. That's the problem. But I do found a very nice tutorial on Dev Tool, so I'm gonna give it a try. So, uh, Boyan, do you have any suggestion of like anything other than this? Hmm. Well, uh, basically, what I like to do is uh, set up uh, pre-commit hooks, so everything is tested uh, before it goes uh, upstream uh, to the repository and then uh, run tests before it's uh, packaged into Docker. So a uh, resulting Docker file is super small and your DevOps can basically do some optimization there and just uh, ship it like that. Basically, I'm do all the testing before uh, getting it into Docker. Right, That that's correct, actually, yeah. Because it, it takes time to spin up the Docker, right? So, uh, yeah. And, I, um... I love my Docker uh, images being very small. Yeah, unfortunately, I have no control over that because that's our back end. And, uh, but I think, yeah, it's, it's not that big, like, cause, uh, yeah, cause the database is very lightweight, so it's not heavy, uh, but yeah, it's just like, you know, uh, yeah, I just gotta need the back end to be up and running while I'm running this test. And, um, so Lace, do you have any thing? Um, anything? no, I didn't discover anything new this week. Um, I'm basically just playing with Jupyter notebooks everywhere. Um, oh. yes. have, you, have you tried Jupyter theme? Yes, I have because I was on the, we were talking about this one day actually, I think we're talking about Binder and the integration, like the JavaScript stuff on like the plugins, different plugins that you can put in um, Jupyter Notebooks. And then you told me about the Jupyter team theme and then Danny asked about the Jupyter team, wasn't it last week when we're in um, Pyder Manchester yeah, uh, like you people ask me, why do you have your Jupyter Notebook in dark mode? And <laughs> it's just something very nice that I discovered. It's called Jupyter Themes. So, yeah. There's a dark mode. Yeah. Yeah. It's a theme. It's yeah, a theme. Yeah, you want to open that there, that there, maybe. Yeah, I could uh, have, a, have a look. Just one second. Let me... Um... Yeah, it's super interesting because, like, you can install... There are, like, different uh, plugins that you can install and do pretty much anything with it. Um, but the, the themes is super cool because you can have like dark mode of Jupiter and it's, yeah, it's quite interesting. Yeah. So it's things like this. Yeah. So you can have a Jupiter <gasps> notebook in like dark mode. Mm -hmm. And so this Sold. is another one. <laughs> and this is, this is like not dark theme, but like they make it like more clear. Um, yeah. You, you got a lot of themes to choose from as well. I guess you can make your own theme. Uh, I don't know, like whether you can just use the CSS to with this or how, uh, but like they, they have, well, I only need a dark mode so I can find it in here and that's, that's <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just called Jupyter hyphen themes, I think. Yeah. 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 It's quite a cool one. Um, yeah. So just doing that and training some, some Panda stuff, watching your, your videos on, yeah, your, um, Twitch videos on the data science series. I'm just doing that stuff, but there's like no new libraries. I'm sorry, everyone. That's okay. That's okay. I think, uh, Boyan, do you have anything to add before we end this episode? Mm. Uh, no, I didn't prepare much uh, in terms no, of okay. new libraries. No, it's Next okay. Library. <laughs> What's your favorite library? At the moment? Yeah uh fast api but it's a framework more <laughs> i love yes. it 
it's yeah, basically three lines of code and you have your API running and it's like, yes, this is what you yeah. wanted. Yeah. Right. So um, I think that's it. And thank you so much, Boyan. Like, really love chatting with you and um, and your unicorn as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, uh, really, really happy to see you here and hopefully see you very, very soon for another workshop or other things. And um, yeah, for those who are watching, uh, join the virtual coffee. Uh, check out Boyan's Twitter. I will put all the link uh, in the description. So yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. It was super fun. <laughs> yeah. So um, let me put this. Okay. So thank you everyone. Yeah. Thank bye you bye. everyone, and see you. Bye. <laughs> bye.